You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Uh, LSU did it. Saturday in Tiger Stadium is a double-digit underdog. They beat Florida. Ty Davis-Price sets the single-game rushing record. And nobody's really talking about it because uh, Ed Ogeron got fired. So, um, what felt inevitable is now reality. Uh, less than two years... After winning the national championship, polishing off arguably the greatest season in the history of college football, Ed Ogeron fired on Sunday by LSU. Uh, he will, as you know, finish this season and then be replaced in 2022. There's a lot of different directions that will take the conversation. How we got here. The timing of the decision why they paid the buyout, and certainly who's next. And we're going to get to all of that here today. Let me begin with the, the how we got here. Because if there's one objection that I've heard from some, and overwhelmingly I feel, I get the sense, that the LSU fan base is looking at this saying, yeah, we knew that this was coming and it's probably the time, super pumped and always grateful for 2019, but, but this is the right move. There are some, I think, that are still saying, why couldn't you give him more time? He had this great season in less than two years, you fire him. Why were you so impatient to get rid of him right now? And I do understand that thought, which is why I want to add some context to it today. And you've already started to see some of that come to light. I know both Ross Dellinger and Brody Miller wrote pieces for their respective outlets, Ross at SI, Brody at The Athletic, laying out a lot of what happened and what has happened within LSU football since the Tigers won the national championship in 2019. Ultimately, the cumulative weight of so many missteps that weight put tremendous pressure on the on-field result. So much so that the mounting losses just could not sustain that weight anymore. I mean, we could run through the list. And it's all things that intellectually you know because you follow this program and you know all of these things. And in the time, maybe in hopes of being optimistic, you explain them away however you might, but realistically, you know that these are things that are just unforgivable and collectively could not be tolerated. The botched assistant coaching hires from Bo Pelini, which cost you $7 million to get out of that deal, and Scott Linehan, and turning over half your staff this year, more than half your staff this year, and hiring two coordinators in a make-or-break year that had never done that job before, evidence time and time again that Ed Ogeron does not know how to hire assistant coaches. It's something I've said over and over here. And I've gotten pushback against it, but he does not know what he is looking for in assistance. On top of that, he does an interview where he acknowledges he didn't even interview these assistant coaches. How can you possibly think one, it's okay to hire someone without interviewing them. And two, to actually acknowledge it in an interview. There was the social justice mishandling of events last summer. Now being written about. And a lot of things that have been known or whispered about, now that Ed is out, you're going to start to hear a lot of these things come to light. Last summer, with all the social in injustice protests. There was a fracture created within the team, Ed and his players, among the coaching staff. Ed went on Fox News, said we love President Trump. I am not here in 
any way to talk about yours or my or his or anyone's political leanings. Don't care. But you have a lot of young black men in that locker room that didn't approve of that. And when they approached him about it and wanted to march, skip practice and conduct a march, he pushed back on that. That was not well received which is why you had the LSU team marching without their head coach. That bled onto the field. And once you've lost that trust, brother, sometimes you're never going to get it back. On top of that, there's the public embarrassments. Pictures in bed with women. Shirtless pictures by the pool with women. The sissy blue comment walking into the Rose Bowl. The stories that have now come about his interaction with fans in Fushan this past summer. The fishing hole comment on his coach's show. When things aren't going good, every one of those molehills feels like a mountain. And that's what happens so many times over with Ed. When you are the highest paid public employee in the state of Louisiana, And you are the face, not only of LSU football, but of Louisiana State University. You are going to be held to a different standard. I have said it many times, and I'll say it again. I don't care what Ed Ogeron does in his personal life. I sincerely mean that. Live and let live. He is a rich man in his 60 years old who is single and is free to live his life. And I do not in any way have any judgment or objection to that. How you carry yourself publicly, though, does reflect on LSU, the university, the athletic department, the football program, all of it, and it matters. And he lost sight of that. And then there's so many of the behavioral things. One of Ed's biggest shortcomings is that in times of stress, he devolves. When things are not going great, he is poor in those situations, emotionally. We now have heard the story publicly about what happened before the Kentucky game. There was a hype video that was supposed to be played. There was an issue with that. Ed Ogeron throws a chair against the wall. He berates the staff in front of the team. There were staff members who were try- who had a physical altercation and had to be broken up. Like, though, the, the Ole Miss Ed yelling, berating assistants, making things just generally miserable for everyone in the building, that's where this had gone again. It's why... LSU was in this situation where Scott Woodward had no choice. When all of that is happening and you see this deterioration of your program as a whole and you're still and you're losing on the field and not just losing, but losing badly and the things that you needed to fix are getting worse. You lose to Kentucky the way you did. It's just unforgivable. And Scott Woodward was in a situation where he had to make a decision. Do you let him continue to try to get it right, running the risk of more public embarrassments, more of an erosion of this program? Or do you make the move now? And he made the right decision to make the move now. And so LSU will finish the 2021 season with Ed Ogeron still in place, and they'll begin their search in earnest for who is next. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.